was overactive as a child. My parents didn't know what to do with me. They were thinking of sending me to a military school. Some of the things that I would do, I would literally run up walls. I hadn't learned to make a flip like Donald O'Connor used to do, but I would run up walls. I like everything about the violin. I am drawn to violins and bows like a bee is to the nectar of a flower. I remember one time there was a, a violin that was left out in an orchestra rehearsal and I went over to take a look at it and I saw immediately that it was by a very important violin maker. And the, the owner came over and said, that's all you ever do is look inside violins. Instead of being insulted, I felt very complimented. Since my father always wanted to play the violin, he said, let's give the kid violin lessons. We'll lock him in his room for an hour, and he won't bother us. My parents found a violin teacher, a real old timer, a fellow born in 1889, and he taught by the pier in Santa Monica. And so my first lessons were with him. And he was, I would say, along with my father, the greatest inspiration that I've ever had in my life. When I was a student at USC, Heifetz was the professor there. And so I, I got up the courage to audition for him. And I uh, had some very interesting meetings with him, both as a, uh, in the violin class and also socially. Yasha Heifetz was the preeminent name throughout the world, possibly the greatest violinist who ever lived, along with Paganini. So everybody knew him. I was working at a delicatessen at the time. He used to drive by on his way to his beach house. His window was open. He was driving his, his famous Bentley car. I shouted out of my waves, hello, Mr. Heifetz. And he rolled up the window as quickly as he could. I remember at my first audition, I played for him the minuet from a Schubert Sonatina. And he said, you're coming in a fraction of a second early on the eighth notes. I didn't react because I thought that he was talking to the pianist. And then he turned and he looked directly at me with those piercing gray-blue eyes of his, and he pointed at me and he said, you, you, Mr. Gold. And I want to tell you, I jumped a little bit. I love going to Italy and Spain. I go there probably more often than any other place, also Vienna. And I have fond recollections of playing in Transylvania, doing some uh, music that would be associated with vampires and Dracula and death and things like that. Public loves it. They're afraid of it, 
but they're drawn to it. The bow that I use most often is known throughout the world as the bow of death. It belonged to the famous 19th century violinist Edward Remenyi, who was a Hungarian, May 15th, 1898. Orpheum Theater, you can see the headliner is Edward Remenyi. He had retired as a concert violinist, and then he was brought back by the Orpheum Theater circuit to play on vaudeville at what was announced at that time as a fabulous sum of money. Now the bow has opals inset into the frog. The bow is mounted in gold. Opals are good luck to a person whose birthday is of that month, October. And Remenyi was not born in October. He had played the whole program magnificently. He was one of the great violinists of all time. He was asked to play an encore. He started to play the pizzicato from the Sylvia Ballet of Delib. He stopped playing. He appeared to talk to his friend, Franz Adelman, who was the concertmaster. And then he collapsed on stage from a stroke. Every subsequent player and owner of that bow died violently. I am the only one who is yet alive. Here is an old photograph, Remenyi with some of his friends, and he's holding the bow of death. He had a great sense of humor, and on the back, he writes, last in the crowd. Music is, has been the most beautiful thing in my life. Music has caused me to take an interest in everything that exists in the world. The violin and music is the center of that world and the universe, and everything spokes out from it. I believe that everything in the world is interrelated, and I relate all of these things through music. Thank you.